This video is the second part of our basic NMR operation training and it covers the automatic 400 MHz NMR instrument in McCourtney. All safety requirements you learned prior to this point apply. Persons with cardiac pacemakers are not permitted in NMR rooms. Samples must be in tubes closed with cups and carried in transport containers. You must have your goggles on whenever you are holding a sample in your hand. If you hear an oxygen sensor alarm, leave the room immediately. When you plan to use the automatic 400, it is a good idea to check if the changer has available positions. First, you will navigate to our website nmr.nd.edu and click on Time Booking, Automated Broker 400 and Current Queue. It opens the page where you see a current queue of the instrument. If there are any completed positions in the changer that have not been submitted again, you may go to the NMR room with your sample. When you arrived in the NMR room, first check the light on the changer. If it is red, the instrument stopped with some error. Please report it to us as soon as possible. If it is green or yellow, all clear, you can proceed. Before you open your sample carrier, put on your goggles. Insert your sample in a spinner. Remember, do not touch the spinner directly. Look for a yellow or a green slot on a computer screen. Check this slot in the changer. It may have a finished sample sitting there. You can take the finished sample out. Using a tissue, push the spinner off into a spinner rack and place the finished sample tube in the tube rack on the desk. Put your sample into the changer. Pay attention to the slot assignment, whether it is the day or night experiment. Next, point your phone at the QR code on the wall to open the web interface of the instrument. Alternatively, you navigate to nmr.nd.edu on your device, click on Time Booking, scroll and click Automated Broker 400 and choose Automated 400 Web Interface. Important! You must submit your sample while you are in the NMR room. You'll sign in with your net ID and password. All right. So this is the web interface. Um, you'll see that there's some experiments that are completed in here. And there's some that are queued at nighttime. So the automated system, uh, the rules are during the daytime, you get 15 minutes per experiment. And then you're allowed up to two hours of instrument time during the day. And then at night, you're allowed however long at night, you know, um, it could be four or five hours or whatever, but they have to wait until nighttime to run. Also, the daytime experiments can only go in spots one through 18, and then the nighttime can only be in 19 through 24. So um, don't queue up a night experiment in slot five, right? Um, we had some problems with the whole thing being filled up with nighttime experiments, and then nothing got ran. So they were all just sitting there waiting at night. So we restricted it. So uh, let's say I walk in and I put my sample in spot number two. I'm going to click check the box for number two, and I'm going to add an experiment down here. So there's an add button. And it pops up a window. Um, this is all of the same information that we just entered on the 500. It's just a little bit different of a format, right? So this plot title is that red text. So let's say I put in my menthol sample in there. Um, we don't need to change where it's saved on the disk. Experiment number. So this is just like number one and number two on the manual instrument. This one starts at 10, so it doesn't overwrite anything. And then this experiment drop down, that's what experiment that you're going to run, right? So in this case, I want a proton. So proton RO. And the name. So now it just defaults the date and your net ID and the slot number. And the solvent, uh, you know, obviously select what solvent. So 
with the data set name, it's going to, that's how the file is going to look, right? But it also gives um, the plot title and the information in there. So you guys can still differentiate what, what is what in there. So use plot title there for whatever details that you need. Uh, this is the NS. So I think this one defaults at eight or 16 for a proton. So if you want to change it or make sure that it's eight and hit eight. And the priority and nighttime button. So the priority button doesn't work, but it has to be there for nighttime to work. So um, normally priority lets you jump the line, but nobody can jump the line. So, or if you want to specify, hey, I need this to run at night because it's a carbon experiment, then you just check the box that says night. Neither of those in, that, in this case. So I'm going to hit add experiments. And it just adds it there and it says paused but available. So now we can close the window. And there we go. It shows up as paused and available. So it's not actually in the queue waiting to go yet. It's the information is just in there. So we're going to select it again and hit the submit button. And then it'll actually go into the queue and you know, where, whatever spot that you're in in line, it'll run it. If you mess it up or you want to change something or delete something, you can just select it and hit delete. Um, I don't think it will let you delete. It certainly won't let you delete something that's queued if you don't own it. Um, these completed ones, you, I think you can delete these under your accounts. Um, it doesn't delete the data or anything. It just clears it out of the screen. Let's see if it lets me. Yeah. When you guys go down there, you'll see the computer. I'll bring it up here in the remote system. You'll see the screen sitting next to it. It'll look like this. It'll have all the green circles on there or yellow um, or pink. Um, yellow is the completed ones that are already done. But when you go down there, you'll see the sample change. It'll have two sitting in there, but the spot might be green. That means that their sample's already won. It's already been run. And you can take that tube out and put yours there if you want. Um, definitely don't take out any tubes that are pink. Those are in the queue waiting to go. Um, if they're green or yellow in that spot, then you're free to use it. So there, you'll see a uh, rack sitting on a desk and a, and a little trash bucket. So the rack is where I tell everybody to put the tubes in that they remove from the carousel. And then... Once a week, I'll take whatever's in the rack and move it into the bucket. So the bucket, uh, once that thing fills up, it's free game. I give it away to whatever lab wants them and cleans them out. But definitely don't forget to come back and get your tubes. Right? 